Good morning. It's Tuesday morning, and today we are going to look at John 21, verses 24 and 25, the last two verses of the book. This is the disciple who is bearing witness about these things and who has written these things, and we know that his testimony is true. Now, there are also many other things that Jesus did. Were every one of them to be written, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. And there it ends. So, there you go. What does that tell us about the Bible? Anyone? Anyone? Yeah. We say, well, the Bible's inspired, so, you know, it, it, it what? It fell from heaven on golden tablets, like the Mormons. No. It, it was dictated by an angel. It was dictated by the Holy Spirit. The gospel writers sat there listening and wrote what they heard. Um, no, none of those, those uh, mental pictures that we get are true. What John says here is, and what, what I think we have to agree about, the scriptures are written. The scriptures are the written testimony of faithful witnesses. These are people just like us who experienced the risen Lord, experienced these things, and wrote them down in letters and books. Um, in the case of the letters, they didn't really know or mean for them to be collected and kept and used as Holy Scripture. In the case of the Gospels, I think they were trying to write something for the public, uh, but they had no idea that 2,000 years later, we'd be reading and arguing over their every syllable. Um, they might have written more carefully if they had known that was coming. Uh, so, so what we have is the testimony of faithful witnesses. And when you say that, sometimes people go, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. When you think about it, it's actually true. That's, that's what we have. Um, we say, well, the Bible then is inspired. Well, sure it is, but what does that mean? It means that we have the testimony of faithful witnesses. So um, for those of you that might have a more of a, of, a, of a fundamentalist sort of leaning or background or something, you'll be upset by this, and I'm sorry. Um, but if you think about it, that's really all we've got. You You can't point to anything more than the testimony of some witness somewhere. And in some cases, we're not even sure who these witnesses are. We don't really know who wrote some of these books. We just know that they've been accepted. Um, in the case of the Old Testament, the Hebrew Scriptures were accepted by the Jews for hundreds of years. And the New Testament, it's accepted by the church for all these years. And um, even if we don't know who wrote them, we just say, well, these are, these are books, and they're written to someone from someone, and all we can do is just carry on and, and hold on to them because the church has held on to them until now. Um, a lot of Protestants don't like to talk about church tradition because we have the Bible and we have church tradition, and the two are separate, and you don't believe in tradition, but you believe the Bible, right? That's what people say. Well, guess what? The Bible is a part of church tradition. Tradition is a larger thing than just uh, stories about dead saints. It's, it's all of the church's history uh, and all of the church's beliefs sort of rolled into one big, um, one big thing. And when we um, when we separate out and say we're only going to believe in the Bible, well, if you don't believe that it's the testimony of faithful witnesses, then you have to make up something else to give you a reason to believe it. And that's where we get all these these kind of weird theories. Um, I do believe the Bible is inspired. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I believe that that inspiration comes through the Holy Spirit, and I believe that it's intended for us to read and digest and use in our lives. Um, I don't think it's a handbook for every situation that comes along, and I don't think that it's a 
it's a um, uh, sort of guidebook to take you through life. Um, it's not sort of radioactive with the Spirit's presence in it, but the Spirit speaks through those words in a way that the Spirit doesn't necessarily speak through other um, other writings and other other things. And you know, in the early church, they had the problem of trying to decide what books are we going to hang on to as canonical, what books are going to be uh, included in the Scripture, what books are we going to leave out, and the basic rule was, does this add anything new to our understanding? There were other rules, but you could conceivably have something that was old enough and close enough to the apostles to to be included in the scripture, but, you know, it doesn't really add much. There's not really anything new in there that we can't live without. And so um, it was difficult for the early church to to make those uh, distinctions. And so sometimes in the very early days, you get all th- kinds of things quoted in the in the early fathers that they quote as though they're quoting scripture, but we don't see those books as scripture. So there's a little bit of gray area there. Well, anyway, I hope that uh, this has meant, that this is, uh, you know, that this has made some sense for you. And um, we will see you tomorrow. I have no idea what we're going to do tomorrow, but we will see what happens tomorrow. Have a great day.